Hello all, my name is uh, Deep Ranjan. A very good morning to all of you. So today in this video, I'm going to explain you uh, another classification project. The name is Breast Cancer Classification. So for that, I have uh, taken this data set and that is from a Kaggle one. Actually, it is a very huge data set. Okay, so I'll just open that link. Okay, I have given the link in the uh, Collab notebook itself. You can check it from there as well. Okay, so this is a data set, uh, Kaggle page. You can see here it's a 1 GB of data set, but it is close to 3 GB. It is okay. So if we, if you will try to uh, download this data set in your, like I try to upload your data set in the Google Collab, it will be somewhere around uh, 3 GB or 4 GB, something around that. So in this data set you can see uh, multiple columns are there and inside each sorry multiple folders are there and inside each folder two subdirectories are there 0 and 1 0 means uh, non IGC that means non breast cancer and 1 is for breast cancer person is having a breast cancer or all that so let's uh, go to the code let's try to understand how we are going to implement these things okay so what I did here uh, first of all I have created a directory inside my collab sorry inside my Google Drive okay and I'm going to perform everything inside that drive only okay and this is a drive name that I have given okay so I'm just uh, importing OS here and I have provided the path of my drive sorry a drive link drive folder so after that uh, I have uh, inst like uh, imported here some of the necessary libraries first like a tensorflow OS numpy pandas matplotlib these libraries are very common okay that's that we are using it from our machine learning days and tensorflow uh, that is also we are using from a last last one or two project we are using or tensorflow as well tensorflow keras this library are a common for us right now so what actually we are using here that is from keras we are importing sequential and the model so model is for model building okay and sequential is for sequential layers we are creating here multiple layers here so that's why we are importing sequential and we are going to use here conv 2d convolution 2d layer okay max pooling is also required and global average pooling is also required Although I haven't used this thing, but I have imported there because I was testing with the multiple models. Okay, so that time I was using this um, max pooling layer and the global average pooling. But in this project, it is not required because uh, in this project, I'm going to use here a transfer learning technique. Okay, so how we will implement the transfer learning there that you will see in this video as well. Okay and also activation function dropout batch normalization these things are very common uh, whenever we are going to create any kind of a CN network we are using these kind of a things okay and open CV that is CV2 okay that is also required just to like load the images and for the prediction purpose and we are going to use this open CV first thing first what I had did here uh, I have provided the path of my data set okay so my data set path those you can see here uh, there are multiple folders are there right so I have taken only one folder in this this one so I have taken the folder that is 10264 okay and inside that two sub directories are there one is from the no and another is from yes okay I provided the path here nothing else I have done and after that what I did okay so I'm just uh, like uh, uh, creating uh, like trying to see how many files are present okay how many images and how many labels are there okay so I'm just checking from there so what I'm doing here uh, like inside a for loop okay I'm just uh, uh, zipping a directory list and the classes so class for classes we have our uh, two classes right now no and yes and directly list that I have already given here no and yes best cancer this one is the directory list. so in that way we it will just uh, what it will do uh, it will just uh, e append file path and the labels okay inside this file paths right yeah file fast list inside that list it will append all the file paths okay and inside labels it will append all the level 
names like a no yes low yes according to their respective to their file pass and all that and after that what I am doing here I'm just uh, creating a data frame okay uh, whatever file path and level I have uh, like a shaved in a list I'm just uh, converting that lips you know data frame okay for that this code is and if you can see here I have printed some of the uh, like a uh, rows here so you can see uh, like uh, in every row the file path is there the complete file path is there and this with respect to their labels okay which is also there so you can see I have uh, like a 1204 images I have taken for this purpose but we have uh, like a uh, lots of image for that just for a testing purpose I have used 1204 otherwise if we uh, try to create a complete project like a uh, complete into sorry not into it uh, just like uh, if we're going to implement and we are going to use it somewhere so at that point of a time we have to use a more number of images okay for so for that we have our images you can check it here that we have a uh, lots of images but for this one I have taken only 1204 1204 images only for that okay after that I'm just checking uh, whether my data set is balanced or not so for that I'm just checking the labels how many values are present in our in my labels column so how many yes and how many no values are there so you can see there is slight difference in that so I can consider it as a, it's a balanced data set it's not an unbalanced one so that's why and in this one I'm just uh, trying to see some of the images okay uh, from our data set like a uh, uh, which all belongs to which categories so it's just a random images nothing else okay just for the visualization purpose I have created it after that what I am doing here I'm just performing a train test split so I'm just splitting my data set into train and test first after that train will be divided into two parts one is train and one is validation okay. and after that what I am doing here uh, I'm just uh, doing a image data generation that simply means we am going to perform here some augmentation Be as we are we have taken only uh, one 1204 images so we have to perform some augmentation technique okay so that our model will perform better okay so this is all right now okay and after that what I have done here I have just uh, created a created a training set validation set and the test set these are the just sets so what I'm doing here in the training set I'm just taking a data frame from train new okay this one okay this one I'm taking here and inside that data frame what all columns we are going to consider for X so I'm going to consider the file path and file why I'm going to consider labels column and target size target size means like image size what image size we are going to consider here so for that I have taken here 224 okay so that is fine and it is working fine with this model and batch size is 32 and class mode is binary simply means because we have a, like a, we are dealing with a multiple uh, binary class classification problem only two outputs we are looking for yes and no so that's why it's a binary thing so I have to click written as a binary if we have a like a more than two then we can go for the categorical one and shuffle is equal to two so shuffling will be there okay nothing else and same for the validation and the same for the testing set same thing I'm doing here only changes I'm doing here inside like that only the like a this this valid and this test one nothing else I'm doing everything is uh, same as the training one nothing else and you can see that how many like uh, what all things we have taken like uh, for first one for training we have taken 1024 and for the validation 115 and the for testing I have taken 61 images for the testing so I think it's fine okay and also I have taken like a uh, which uh, like uh, uh, when we created uh, this training set after creating a training set which category belongs to which value okay so no belongs to zero and yes belongs to one just we can show that so here I have started uh, like uh, as I told you like here I am using a transfer learning technique okay so I am using here uh, ResNet 50 v2 okay let me write it here as well uh, like a tra um, transfer learning 
okay so you can see that it's a transfer learning technique so what i'm using here i'm just uh, like a uh, uh, from keras dot application justness 50 model is there i'm just taking that model as our base model so weights are there so weights i'm taking here from image nits okay and input size i have taken 224 okay because i have like uh, taken my training data in that much sense only okay and include top is equal to false okay nothing else i'm doing then after that what i'm doing here i'm just freezing my base model I'm not going to train my base model completely okay so I'm going to use my base model pre-trained weights here okay and after that I have used some of the layers like one layer I have used here global average pooling layer and one is dropout and and at last there is an output layer and inside that we are I'm looking for only one output okay it's a binary classification problem so whether we are looking for yes or whether we are looking for no so only one output we are required i'm just simply checking a uh, model summary so you can see that total parameters we have of like a 23 million okay out of which we have to train for only 2000 because rest of the uh, like a weights rest of the weights are already trained on a image net data set and that is a very huge data set so i'm going to use here that weight only and after that also i have used here callback function so what it will do it will save like uh, uh, i have given the model training of 100 epochs let's say if my model is performing uh, very well in the 50, 50 epochs okay so what it will do it will save our models it will save our best model based on that okay so this is the callback and after that I'm doing a model dot compile so inside the compile uh, I've provided the loss that is binary class entropy and the optimizer wise we are using here Adam it is frequently used so nothing need to worry and matrices wise we are going to use here uh, accuracy now after that I'm just uh, fitting my model model dot fit inside that passing the training data okay and for validation I'm passing the validation set I'm epox ox is equal to 100 and callbacks is equal to this callbacks okay this one it will save our best weight okay and verbose is equal to 1 that's just to show output what all output I want. so I have already uh, trained this model okay uh, and it took uh, like a uh, how much time I know almost like a half an hour no not half an hour stick it took me all, almost uh, 15 minutes okay 13 to 15 minutes to train okay so right now i'm not going to train this model i have already trained this model and i got a, a good accuracy or close to that so let me sh like uh, show you uh, what accuracy i got so i got the accuracy of 92 percent okay and for and also my validation accuracy is 91 percent and loss wise is uh, 0 0.2 and 0 0.27 that is the lost Y so I can say that my model is performing well okay I've, I got a better accuracy and the better loss as well okay after that what I did I've just saved my model model dot save and you can see the, that that uh, it's a visualization thing like uh, how much loss and the how much accuracy I got so accuracy wise it is close to 1 okay 90 percent and the losses wise close to 0 0.2 so it's a pretty good model okay now time for the testing so what i'm doing here uh, uh i'm just loading my model okay so model path i have given that is model.h5 okay and tf.keras.model.load model so inside that i'm just loading my model inside there is okay and import matplotlib and the numpy i guess matplotlib is not required okay so let me comment it out a uh, numpy is required because i'm just going to like a uh, resize this okay resize images and all that because images we will get from uh, like a uh, any kind of a size so we have to convert it into uh, 224 into 224 because i have taken the my training model in that i have trained my model on that many size only so we have to consider that only so if i run this uh, one okay i have already run this one and it is given me a no so let me take uh, some uh, another one okay uh, whether that one is working fine or not let me take uh, some other images okay so that one i'm taking 
let's see how it is working if it is working fine or not so let me run it I have taken it from no only okay so you can see that so you can see that it is predicting no so close it's my model is performing well okay and also my model is giving a, a kind of a probability here because I'm using a sigmoid activation function so it gives me the value in between 0 and 1 okay so for that what I have defined here I have defined a threshold value here so uh, whenever our model will give the value greater than 0 0.5 and equal to that so it will print as yes okay and less than that will be no that is the thing okay so I think this is fine for this video and uh, uh, implementation wise uh, like not implementation the flask integration wise it is very easy I have uh, already created a video on that okay you can check on the playlist as well so you need to do simply like uh, whatever model you have saved so this model you have to download it from there okay from this uh, collab or drive and paste that model here and change some of the image sizes and all the classes name and everything and you are good to go okay nothing need to worry so thank you guys bye bye